What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs? Back yourself. What, you know, it's too easy to try and take too much advice from other people. Follow your instincts. And if you follow your instincts, generally you're not going to go far wrong. And if you do, and when you do, you can learn from your, your mistakes and your errors and you can develop yourself and that's the only way you're going to do it. Usually at times of economic adversity is usually when the biggest opportunities arise. Do you think it's important um, to have adversity in your life in order to succeed? No, I don't necessarily think you need uh, to have experienced that adversity. It sort of helps you and gives you the right tools because you know somewhere along the line where you're an entrepreneur, you're taking chances and taking risks, you're going to have setback. And if you haven't had that experience of a setback, then you're less likely and less able to deal with that setback at that moment in time. What, what, what would you consider as a typical characteristic of a successful entrepreneur? The ability to be able to take risk. Not risk per se, but the ability to be able to take the risk and make, make the right decision. You know, I mean, you can be a gambler, you can be reckless, and many person in history has been reckless and have, haven't really thought something through and have failed. And I, in fact, I had a meeting with a professor from uh, one of the local universities who was doing a, something very similar on entrepreneurship. And he, in his previous life, um, used to be a business advisor. And he used to go and mentor businesses and so on. And he could clearly identify the same thing that business stop growing at a time when the business person, the entrepreneur, stops being enterprising, stops taking risks. You know, risk is really important. Stretching yourself on a continuous basis is very important. So I would say risk is probably up there amongst the vital ingredients that are necessary to make a true entrepreneur. How much does motivation play a part in making a successful entrepreneur. Is there, is there some sort of formula that you could describe that, that will help entrepreneurs to become more successful? Is there a formula for somebody playing test cricket or being an international footballer or being an Olympian? How do they find that extraordinary motivation? What motivates them? Just maybe more from within, perhaps. It's, it, it, is, it, yeah. it is really within. And I think, you know, the, when you do actually start analysing it that way, it is really within. It's within all of us, isn't it? It's there, we just haven't looked. And we don't look because usually we're in a comfort zone. You know, We're in a comfort zone, and we're not taking any chances, nice and steady, whatever your lot is, you, you at least say, well, actually, I'm the same as everybody else. As a young person today, if I was a young person today, I would actually, well, have so much advice from all sorts, all sorts of quarters that I wouldn't know what, what to do. I'd be more confused than having some direction. So my view really would be is actually as a person, in order to be anything in our lives, we have to look at ourselves first, expose ourselves first to ourselves, understand what a, what a character, what a makeup is all about. And when you dig at yourself and you find out what really, it, it, whether you've got it or not, you will surprise yourself. I would say virtually every single human being has that seed somewhere within, within, within themselves. They just need to find a way of identifying where it is and getting it out. That I mean, this is the, the difficulty I've, I've had with these young people I'm mentoring at the moment. Some of them have got it. I can see it. It is so, so obvious, so contagious. I want to grab it for them. But, but they've already done it, which is, which is fantastic, because that in itself is a motivation to me, because it's, it's, it's giving me a positive vibes. It's, you know, it's, it's a real, um, real energy that, that comes out of that. And then there's the other type of young person that is not really looking, you know. And if you're not looking, it's like you're learning to drive. If you're not looking where you're going, you're going to crash, aren't you? So what I'm saying is you're a learning driver and you just basically stay focused, keep your eyes open. Without that, there's nothing. Students ask me many times, what um, is an entrepreneur? And, and what's the association between entrepreneurship and leadership. It depends on what which context you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about a um, uh, business, uh, somebody somebody creating a business and developing a business from scratch, then that entrepreneur generally is an automatic leader, because the 
because the people he, he or she employs will follow that person because they, because they have that faith and confidence in that individual who's taking his chances and really he is their provider. Um, but then there's, there's, there's another difference. You know, if you're in the corporate world, uh, an entrepreneur will not fit the corporate world because it's all about processes and procedures uh, and bureaucracy. It's, it's doing things in a such a certain regimented way. And if anything, it actually um, kills off the entrepreneurial flair that one needs to have. And there's many, many examples. I mean, I personally could never work in a corporate world because you'd be regimented, you'd be in a straitjacket, you have to do it as in, a, in, a certain, in a certain way, in a certain process. But that person, a professional executive, can also be a, can be a leader and can be a, a charismatic leader. Um, but in my books, being entrepreneurial is a, is a natural, natural leader, you know, where the, where the real charisma comes out, and that is very contagious. And a lot of working class young people today, I suppose that's really how, how they could regard themselves and say, look, you know, I'm starting at the bottom of the ladder, there's only one way for me to go, and let's take a chance. And when you take a chance, you will surprise yourself. You know, so you, you go well, going up a ladder, right? No one, when, when you're making the move, you're not going to slip, right? You'll only slip in extreme circumstances. And when you do slip, you'll surprise yourself how quickly the, the, the survival instinct kicks in. That's something else I've learned well, later on in my life, that when you do really expose yourself to matter of life and death, where the survival instinct kicks in, you know? Um, I mean, I've done many things like, you know, like mountains and deserts where I've really stretched myself and dug deeper than I've ever dug before physically and mentally. And I've been able, I've been pleasantly pleased and surprised. And I suppose it's like a drug, you know, I want more and more of that because I want to see how far a human being can be pushed and stretched in order to fulfill themselves. And that's what the Olympians do. That's what the, the international athletes and uh, sports people do. They've managed to focus themselves. So it's a seed within you. You've got to look for it make some decisions and but making those decisions don't take big leaps make small steps i mean you take those small steps will give you confidence well, success doesn't grow on trees but you need to find a route you need to find a way for yourselves